How are you doing? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I haven't seen you in a while. Long while. N no, we haven't. You were, uh, you were doing, well, you were, you for the most part were doing stand up at the comedy store. I was doing pretty much everything, but Mitzi just did not like me as a stand up. <laughs> oh, what? No, you just gotta change that last name. It's too long on the bill. Eggs. <laughs> and I wouldn't do it. I'm like, you know, I've already been stuck with this Polish hell for a quarter of a century. I'm not letting it go now. No. <laughs> Just like Arnold, come Arnold Strong. How about you, Daniel Strong? Yeah, that's it. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Talk to Argus. Have him. You can open for him if you change your name this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! It was it was it was hysterical. There was there's so much that went on there. Oh yeah. Uh, but I met you. You were you were already a black belt. A black belt in what what in karate? Uh, and uh, Japanese Jiu Jitsu. And Japanese Jiu Jitsu. So, yeah. wow. Yeah. So, yeah, you can mess up a dude back then. Yeah, even back then. Yeah. You know what's <laughs> funny was um, Richard Pryor and Sam Kinison would kind of kid around with me, and then Richard would ask me to walk him to his car. Because, <laughs> you, know, you know how people were with him back then. It oh, was, yeah. Was yeah. Coming at him. And yeah. this one, he was able to walk and all that stuff. He goes, hey, John, you mind walking me back to my car? I yeah. Know you care. He goes, I know you can handle shit. I was like, <laughs> yeah, sure, anytime, whatever, Rich, whatever, sure. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just, mm -hmm. so it was just, you know, when Rashawn wasn't there, I would, I would, I would do that. Rashawn yeah. was the guy who was his main bodyguard, but sometimes he didn't show up. Exactly. He yeah. Spots and just kind of leave. So I just, hey, John, you might walk me back to my car. Yeah, sure, of course. You know, the entire time I was there. And I didn't see Richard Pryor till after I left. Oh. So I did not see him. I did not see Sam. But I got the biggest compliments from Fleischer, Charles Fleischer, and from Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, Dice, you know, he was like, he was standing in the back. He's like, hey, you know, hey, hey, hey Daniel, you know, I, I like you a lot. You know why? Because you're out here, you're doing your job, you're paying attention, you're watching, and you're one of the few people around here keeping his fucking mouth shut, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that was when Wheel, Michael Parisi, and, and Jay London were following him around like little puppies. Oh, my God. Those names, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it year was, was it? What? What year was that? That was uh, 92. Okay. 1992. I, I worked, I came, well, I came to work there when I first got to LA, when I found out I was not going to make it as a porn star, I went to work at the, uh, at the comedy store. I got, I got there and I think it was like Labor Day of 1990 uh -huh. and we'd gone out for a show and Paul Mooney had righteously pissed off my, uh, members of my family and I knew that's what I wanted to do. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, what did he say? Oh, he, he just did his set. Oh, he man. just did his set, you know, and he, you had your entitled folks out there. And, and it was back when Dark Man came out. You remember his bit about oh, Dark yeah. Man? Dark yeah. Man, Dark Man, Dark Man. I heard Hollywood. <laughs> and and uh, you know, I'll say it a hundred times a day. Made my teeth whiter. <laughs> and, and, and your dad a bitch. You made that word. And now you can't say it no more. <laughs> he was, oh, he was brutal. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then, of course, we had the really politically correct comedians who would say things like, you know, you're getting old when you find all your favorite records in the nice price section down at Sam Goody. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder who said that. Nobody would say I wonder, that. I wonder, wonder who said that one. Yeah. <laughs> so now, now, are you still doing stand up? No, no, not really. I mean, I, I got burnt out. And, you know, I, at, the, at the time, what happened was... Uh, my sensei was dying. Oh. Cancer. And I went through a divorce, and then about maybe eight months later, I met this woman I was dating at the time, and she was going through cancer. Oh, wow. And yeah, and it just it just got to a point where I just, it was a little difficult to be funny on stage. Yeah, well, you know, that, that, that especially that kind of, yeah, that kind of yeah, trauma, yeah. you know. And, uh, and also, I mean, I, it was just like, it made me kind of question, you know, I mean, I, I enjoy saying that, but I, I enjoy it. It's just the business aspect was not, it was, I mean, getting on stage was the easy part. The hard part mm -hmm. was actually dealing with the bookers and getting. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's the hardest part of any, any entertainment endeavor.
Right. That's that's why I'm doing this 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 the way I want to do it. Otherwise, I'd have an entire production crew sitting there telling me every every little move to make and it's, it yeah. it and so I I'm doing this up. It's going to be an even bigger deal next week. Oh, and cool. so. You're like, yeah, you're like, well, why didn't you put me on then? But, uh, you know, I'd gotta, I, have to, I have to make sure all my production <laughs> value looks good. That's oh, what, so that's, what, uh, that's what's going on with that. Uh, yeah, you know, so you've, so, wow, uh, I, I, you kind of took the wind out of my sails with the whole cancer thing. That's, so I imagine that's what it did for you back then. Yeah. I mean, also, it just, I, I got burned out, you know. Um, oh, yeah. At the, time, at the time, it was just, there weren't that many Asian comics at the time. Oh, yeah. I was dealing with a lot of, a lot of crap. And I was oh, like, yeah. You know what? I, yeah. And the thing was, is this, I, at the time, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, but I, I started, actually, when I got to the store, I was doing, mm -hmm. I, was, I was performing there. And then also what happened was uh, I met a chiropractor who put my leg back together because I got, it, it got badly injured. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's what that's what that's what started your comedy career, as I recall. So he put it back together, and I was in rehab for about a year. So while I was doing stand up, and uh, you know what happened was I, I decided he told me one day he goes you can start training now you can start training where you were back then I was like really, so I started training and then getting back into shape and about within six months I got I was asked to work on a Jet Li movie. Oh my goodness! I love yeah. Jet Li. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I, this was he was still in his prime. So I oh was, yeah, oh yeah. I was in his fourth movie. This was in '86. So mm -hmm. I he was, was this '86 or '96? '86. Was it '86? Oh okay. It came out in '92. Because, oh. But um, but what? Because happened, you did Hook in '91. I remember yes, that. Yeah. 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 yeah the, I, this was this was actually right before that. Yeah. So what oh. happened was um, we did this. I, I did this, and then what happened was we were, um, I thought about it, I was like, wow, this is pretty cool, because I was working with the Hong Kong crew, the guy that trained us mm -hmm. was, uh, was one of Jackie's boys, oh. and, you know, he told us so many stories, and I was like, oh, man, you know, this is pretty cool. It's hard. I almost got run over by a car, but, <laughs> you know, it was, I, I thought this is something I always dreamt about doing as a kid. So, oh, Yeah. Yeah, and that, and I didn't tell I didn't tell many people at the store. That's what I did because, you know, it just, they kind of look no. like, what you know. So I mean, comics are the most cynical people in the world. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Well, that's that's part of the reason part of the reason I left is like, I didn't I didn't have the drive to be a stand up comic. I wanted you know I appreciated it, but I realized. I, I've always wanted to do what, basically what we're doing here right now. I've always wanted to be a show host. I just wanted to talk to people. I've always wanted to talk to people that were more talented, smarter than I am. You know, that's, that's, what, I, that's what I wanted to do. And uh, I just wasn't, and, and I was never going to get stage time from Mitzi. Uh, I did, uh, you know, I, I do remember hosting from, uh, from the uh, piano, though. That was always fun. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> but, you know, here's the thing. You, you weren't in, um, there's a lot of people that, ended up making it that, that right. weren't, weren't a part of the store. So it was, it was, I mean, back then it was, it was two places. It was oh yeah. Place. It was the, either the improv or the comedy store. And Oh, yeah. I remember that feud. Ooh. Yeah. 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 But yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I, now, now that things kind of open up, it's things have changed. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, look, yeah. look back at those days. I mean, there was some guys that she turned down that, that end up making it huge. Well, there's there's few that that, that I kind of justify. You know, uh, Dennis Miller comes to mind. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, she didn't like the, improv comic then. Oh yeah, yeah. And so, and there were there were a lot of folks. That I there was, uh, she, uh, but she always remembered me. I don't. That's I guess great. you know. I mean, you know, that's the you know that says something. You know, it's not like I was like somebody that you know. She always acknowledged me every time I came back. It's like, oh, Daniel, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> And I was, I was, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't get to find out about her memorial, but, uh, but always loved her to death. So, uh, so uh, I guess Danny Stone passed too. Yeah, a lot of guys that we knew back then passed. Yeah, because honestly, I was watching Marin's show. Uh, I was watching Marin's show, and uh, Joey Diaz's character oh, yeah. reminds me so much of Danny Stone. <laughs> I was like wondering, I'm like, well, I was wondering, I was like, yeah, do you think, do you, think you know, because uh, Joey Diaz is like that in general, I guess, but, uh, you know, and I, so, 
and saw Eddie Papatone and <laughs> I'm, I saw Mark Marin at a SAG screening of Glow. Oh. And I talked to him a little bit afterwards. I go, I, look, I know you won't remember me, but yeah. my first day at the store when I got picked up as a regular and we had to, you had to kind of go, you know. You oh, yes, yeah, exactly. You went through the non-paid regular spots right. first. Yeah. yeah. So my very first night was Mark's last night there at the store. Oh, wow. So he kind of ran me through the ropes. He goes, all right, this is what you got to know, blah, blah, blah. Da, da. Mm -hmm. okay, and, he, you know, and I was like, I told him, I go, I don't know if you know this, but you kind of broke me in my first night at the store, and it was your last day. And I think you were thinking about moving mm -hmm. to Arizona at the time. I can't remember, but he's like, oh, wow. We started talking. He, mm -hmm. and I started bringing up some names that we knew back then, and he was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was it was, it was. It was fun. I mean, oh yeah. Well, I, 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 I think that there was a point he had come, he had come upstairs to the office when I was still working upstairs. And, uh, I remember, I remember vividly sitting at that, uh, sitting at that, that desk outside of Mike Becker's office. Oh yeah. You know, the, the reception, the reception desk. Yeah. Uh, at the time, Michael Nordstrom was there. And of course, uh, Russell Starlin, there was Emilio. These were all like the guys that kind of hung out during the daytime. And the, the, so we were working as the, uh, the runners. Oh gosh. Yeah. 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 And so, so we were, and we would answer phones during the day and, uh, and, and right outside of Mike Becker's office, right there by the belly room. <laughs> yes. I remember it vividly. <laughs> I had so, those phones for a year. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. Well, there we go. Well, uh, Mitzi, uh, Mitzi got me off the phones. She didn't like the way I answered the phones. I was, uh, I don't know what it was. A lot of people. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no. But she, I, I think she did. She did like me. I was just such a mess of a kid back then. Hmm. But uh, we're here to talk about you. Okay, yeah. that's yeah. It's like yeah. Stop, stop, stop bragging there, Dan. No, that's, that's we're we're talking about you. So you, you did, you did your movie with Jet Li, and and you've gone on to do several other several other movies and you are now and you are now considered a considered a great source for fight choreography for yeah. for assembling the uh for assembling the fight scenes which i, I you know they I, I that's they you know that that's that that seems like a lot that's it, you know it is it's if you look at it as a, as a three-act structure yeah you're telling it non-verbally that's the best yeah. way I can describe it to anybody that kind of looks at it and go, oh, I'm overwhelmed. I, I, you know, I can't do this, can't do that. But the whole thing is yeah. you're going to design a fight. You know, you're, design, you're, designing a, you're designing a fight in, in a three-act structure. Yeah. Each yeah. individual. So each individual fight within a, within a particular motion picture or TV show is, is part of a three, is itself a three-act play. Yes. You're, yeah. you're building up to the climax and then boom. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's a beginning, middle, and there's got to be a reason for it. Just like right. any theme, there's got to be a reason for the fight. There's right. There's got to be uh, a, a, a turnaround. There's got to be a twist. And, and there's got to be something that ends the fight. Like Just like any scene or any three-act structure, something's got to end it. And what happens to the characters after mm -hmm. that fight into the scenes that aren't action-oriented Mm -hmm. It's a good fight scene. Exactly, that carries into that scene and yes. and and moves it along. Yeah. That's uh, that's uh, that's an impressive. That's I honestly don't know how to respond, John. I just it's like, oh wow, that's that's yeah, that makes total sense, and and yeah. and I totally get that. And now now you you have I've I've seen you voice your opinion and I heard you voice your opinion on on more than one occasion about what you feel to be a really bad fight scene or the show, then you said, oh, that their, their fight scenes are awful. Did you, uh, did you want to share any of those? <laughs> no, I, there's a lot. I mean, there's, yeah, I, there's a lot of fights that, that when a, a filmmaker or a choreographer thinks that it's about all the cool moves. Yeah. It, it isn't because it's, it's, it's essentially, you know, mental masturbation if you really think about it it's like a oh, why why wow. have to fight because well i just want to look cool i want to do i just want yeah. to have cool because i have dealt with you know some filmmakers or performers that just want to look cool they don't care about why they're there they just want to 
you know, they want to do the really impressive move and, oh, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And there's no reason for it. And the thing is, is they don't understand that if you insert that scene for no reason or it doesn't advance a story, yeah. you're, you're going to lose the audience. That's all there is to it. And I try to explain that to actors and, and filmmakers and producers that you stand a chance of doing this. And sometimes yeah. they listen to me, sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, uh, my friend Dan Speaker, who's a swordmaster on Hook. He he calls it cool moveitis. <laughs> oh well, there you go. Yeah. So you know, I, I, I it's, but you you see it, you see it all the time. You oh yeah. And 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 um, not just in, in in the West, you see it in Europe, you see it, you see it in Hong Kong. They do it, they do that all the time. But the, the good choreographers like Yen Wu Ping, Sammo Hung, Jackie. Yeah. There's a reason behind what they do, and there's there's an emotion that changes it's not always anger right anger, exactly anger. well you know that you you mentioned jackie and that's a great example because he, you know obviously he'll he'll do something but you know he'll do a move from a ladder well he needed to be up that ladder there's there's right. a reason he ran up that ladder there yeah. was a reason for everything and uh i want to share a theory with you and i want i want to see see if you uh see if you see if you buy into this because star wars as we know is in my personal opinion is is based on kung fu movies part of part of its part of its part of its mythos is kung fu movies are you talking about the okay four five and six or one two and three or the seven eight nine <laughs> uh, uh well actually uh pretty much uh pretty much well the early ones obviously but i'm thinking four, five, i'm six. yeah four five and six but actually in this case i am going with one two and three okay I'm using one, two, and three because I'm using the example of the most reviled character in Star Wars history, and I have a theme, and I have a, I have a theory, and it's actually been shared by somebody else, uh, okay. and that is that Jar Jar Binks <laughs> is in fact a drunken master. I can see where you're going with that. I because because it, well you know the the one of the one of the classic characters. Matter of fact, uh, did you watch Into the Badlands? I've only watched a couple episodes. I'm so far behind because we were so busy trying to get our production company started. Yeah. We just need to catch up. I mean, I, we have Netflix, so I definitely got to catch up on it. I need yeah, so far, I think they only have three seasons up there, and I think it went four. I think it went at least four. I think it went four seasons. Yeah. But, you know, Nick Frost from uh, Nick Frost with you know, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, he's uh -huh. in that. I was oh. like, really <laughs> you know and so he's 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 a he's a, he's kind of like a drunken master type character interesting yeah. and so uh but the reason about my my reasoning is is because jar jar binks is I, and i think not only is he a drunken master i think he's a sith lord i think I he's darth that. i think he's darth sidious's <laughs> <Not> i <laughs> think he's i think he's darth sidious's master <laughs> so i was Again, just 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 throwing it out there, just to stir up some stuff. <laughs> but you've started your own production company. You mentioned that just now. What uh, and and you are your 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 first film is going to be a documentary. Is that what I understand? Yeah, it's a. I'm. I'll tell you a little bit about. It. I can't say too much about it. It's okay. A documentary on the history of martial arts cinema. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a multi-episode. Uh, thing it's gonna be kind of in the bit ken burns so. oh well there we go yeah i mean i and you know you know by the way what a badass narration that would be to have keith david doing the narration oh my god <laughs> or you <laughs> oh well, i'm very flattered but you know i i i i i thank you you're very kind but uh <laughs> i <laughs> but you know i i actually i do i do pretty well but uh you know i there are a lot of there's a lot of others you know you tip your hat to Jackie Chan and Jet Li. I I tip my hat to John DiMaggio and Maurice LaMarche. And <laughs> oh yeah, Mo, Mo, Mo LaMarche. Oh my God. Mo, yes, you know the brain. Hey. Oh God, God. Hey, he, he, he's he, so much fun to work with. You ever work with him? Yes, and he's iconic though. I mean, that's I haven't I not in a long time. I mean, you know, he barely he barely stuck his head in at the comedy store back in those days, uh, and uh, and then uh, quite a few times back in the day. Oh yeah, but he was. Yeah, I remember that he yeah. had done that uh, that Rodney Dangerfield special with uh, Harry Basil. Yes. Yeah, they had done that uh, that uh, Rodney special. Yeah, so, that was fun. Yeah. yeah, 
Always back to the comedy store. <laughs> it, well, it's it is it is it's it's that it's that dark route from whence we all came. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that's why I, it's I, painted black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like we've all left Mordor. What? Uh, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> yeah. I I do I do I do appreciate those days back then, but. Uh, it definitely, but you definitely took the opportunity and, and really and worked with something and, and something better came out of it. And you've, you know, again, that wonderful little full circle starting out in martial arts and returning to the, uh, and returning to the fold. Yeah, you know, I, I think with any creative, you know, any, anybody that wants to get in the creative entertainment industry, I think all your experiences, even though you feel like you didn't follow through. You never finished mm -hmm. uh, what you, whatever you think is finishing it, get, crossing that finish line. It's mm -hmm. it, that experience always comes to help you in your new endeavors. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. Like I, I never forget this. I remember we were playing in the entertainment softball league. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Mitzi would pay for the our entry fees for all this stuff, and we play guys like at Universal Studios. We 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 pitch we play against Michael Bolton one one time. I remember, <laughs> wow, okay. So yeah, you know, so one I remember we're we're taking uh, we're we're playing down in Long Beach, and we uh, Mitzi chartered the bus and took us back. And I remember Argus Hamilton told us he told me he told me exactly. He said, you know, whether you whether you make this your lifetime career or not. There's things you're going to learn in this business that will stay with you forever. And he's, he's so true. And I, you know, I thank God he's, he's on Facebook because I talk to him often. And I just say, Hey, Argus, I don't know if I ever told you this, but thank you for telling me that because I'm understanding that right now as, you know, as, as I'm becoming a filmmaker and I'm, and when you learn it, when you have to pitch to people and you have to kind of sweeten things up, make, you know, take the tension out of things you know how to make things a little bit better and sweet things up. You know? Right, exactly. You, you know, you, you know how to smooth it over. Got to, right. You, know. <laughs> right, right. you know how to kind of, yeah, just, just yeah, take out the tension out of the situation and kind of, so we can move on. I mean, and I thank him for it. He goes, oh, wow. Man. You, know, you oh. listen to that stuff. I go, yeah, of yeah well, I always, I always, I'm always, I'm always, I'm always looking at his Facebook as well because Argus, pretty much everybody from back in that day, uh, you, uh, Blake, Jackson, uh, Jackson Purdue, oh, yeah. uh, Steve, Steve Kravitz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I just talked to him yesterday. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, you know, uh, Carl is a guy I haven't seen on there in a while. Oh. No, no, Carl LeBeau is there and so is Alan Steven. Uh, the, uh, the, well, there were three, there were, there were like Buster Brown and, oh, Buster's on there. and yeah, Buster's on there. I don't think Buster friend it. I don't think he liked me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Buster friend him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> probably, probably ain't gonna happen, but you know, I uh, love Buster. And then, uh, Carl, what was Carl's last name? Carl, the, Edwards? Uh, Carl Edwards. Thank you. Carl yeah. Edwards. I think, I, I think he's a friend on there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He's, I, 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 every once in a while he'll stick his head up. I mean, yeah, I think he's working in Vegas. He was working in Vegas. He was, before. yeah, he was, he was, he was working in Vegas. You know, uh, I never, I never heard what uh, what's going on with the Todd. Have you heard anything? I heard he's no longer with us. Oh well, oh my goodness. There's there's a picture running away from your house, man. You should probably, you know, it's running away. You should, <laughs> you should try to catch that. <laughs> That's that you know it's you know between between the wife and the dog I love it it's great, but you you know you are you are pulling off the full the full uh, you're pulling off the full uh, Shaolin master there look you've got to get got it rock in there, <laughs> I got to do whatever you do to make things happen <laughs> exactly well anyway I'm gonna let you go man I've talked to you for a good bit, I I really appreciate your helping me out with this this is oh, my sure. my time, little. Man my little thing and you know and uh, thank you for not thank you for not mentioning anything about the vest you're like you know like, and for not making any comment about <laughs> <laughs> like my my friend's kid picked me out oh actually that that reminds me she asked me to ask this question to my guests i'm so i'm gonna actually ask you two questions okay so the question from my my friend's daughter who is 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 part of the show today was what would it take 
and you can, and this can be something of great imagination. It doesn't have to be something you could realistically do. What would it take for you to pursue a career in grave robbing? Grave robbing. <laughs> a strong shovel. A strong <laughs> shovel. You're, you're already, you're already there. You're like, forget this production stuff. I'm going into grave robbing. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Last person's name is Frankenstein, by any chance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's, yeah. Sadie Frankenstein, as a matter of fact. Or, or, <laughs> They live in Texas. They, they, they're investing in chainsaws. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How are you at digging up a mass grave? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and my question for you, because the whole theme of my show, as you know, is, uh, is, is, is the asylum. Uh, of all the people you know, uh, both in life or, you know, famous, who do you think should be locked away? Who should be committed to a mental hospital? <laughs> oh boy! Too many. Oh, too many. <laughs> <laughs> who who needs to be the first to go? Who needs to be the first to get get locked up? <laughs> the OR lineup on any given night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's a good. <laughs> which, by the way, for you folks that don't know what the OR lineup is, it stands for the original room at the Comedy Store. So there were three showrooms. There was the main room. There was the uh, the original room, and then they've uh, they've basically been contracting out the belly room these days. So, yeah, they didn't. The belly room wasn't open at all for just about anything when we were there. It was just the main room and the original room. It was open on certain nights. It, I, for me, when I was there in '86, we would. It was it was the non page room. Yeah, we, yep. we would perform there. It, it was always packed on Monday nights. Oh so yeah, that was, that was our room on Monday nights. So we got to try out our stuff. Uh, and and I remember, like you know, when I was working the back door or or parking the cars, Mitzi would tell us, "Hey, you know, um, the late show, the 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 eight o'clock show in the OR is about no, not the OR, the main room is about to end, mm -hmm. and we're shoveling everybody up into the up into the belly room. So mm -hmm. get and she'd tell me get get A B C D E, you know, get the lineup mm -hmm. together so I'd MC that show. Uh, so." If they wanted more comedy, they'd go up and they'd see us. That's how, you know, they got Mitzi made more money on drinks and exactly made more. Her. Yeah, hey, she yeah. was she, she was all about making the bucks there. Yeah, I mean, I want to, yeah. I, I want to apologize to you and I want to thank you for not bringing it up earlier. How I almost got you into a into a fight with Chuck Norris, and I I really appreciate you're not holding <laughs> much over that. I remember that. You do. do. You know what happened after that? No, you know, I, no. I got to thank you for that. You got to. You know what happened? Okay, here's I, what happened. I walked up to him and I told him, you know, I would I trained with Keith Kelly, blah blah blah, and all this stuff. And we he goes, oh God, yeah. And then um, I said, yeah, I don't remember me. I met you back in the day, you know, when I was competing. He goes, oh yeah, yeah. And so we started talking. He goes, send me your stuff. Let's see what we could do. So that's that's what happened. Oh wow. Yeah, because I did go. <laughs> I mean, you. I, no, I took you. I took you to his. I took you to his seat. Yeah, no, I talked to him. He was. He, if you ever, I mean, I knew him before. I knew he uh -huh. was gonna be cool. But what happened was he. He's always. He's probably a nice guy. Nice as martial arts. Oh guy. yeah, yes. Yeah. It was hysterical. But I had. I had escort. I had escorted him in, as we walked through. You were on stage. I pointed you out to him. I said, "Oh, by the way, that's John Krang. He is a. Yeah. He's a black belt and you know black belt martial artist." And uh, I took took him to sit sit down, and you came off from the stage from your performance. You'd come around the back of the original room, came came out the back door, and and I said to you, and I told you that, hey, you know, uh, I just sat Chuck Norris. And you go, oh, I know Chuck Norris. I said, oh, well, here, let me show you where he sat, where I sat sat him. Yeah. We walked in to the, we went we went in that little back that little back yeah. ramp right there right, to the right. original room. Yeah. I walked in there. Chuck Norris was facing the stage. The show hadn't started yet. I put my hand on Chuck Norris's shoulder and I said, John, this is the guy who said he could kick your ass. <laughs> yeah, we talked for a little bit afterwards. Yeah. I remember. And yeah, yeah, he tried to he tried to get me on some of his shows. It just didn't happen at the time. And just, it just could. Next Stranger. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a really, really super nice guy. He really is. He's very, he's very, he's very straight to the point and he, right. he does, and he carries himself very well. And hey, you know, and, and thanks to Bruce Lee, we know who he is. So, <laughs> yeah. 
John, it's been a great talk, brother. I Thanks, really yeah. enjoy our time. And, uh, and you and I have to see each other in real life and uh, actually yeah. sit down. You're in the yeah. valley, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, hold over. let's let's uh, let's go get some coffee or or go to the Bolarama for a oh. couple of wings. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, we'll get something squared away. It was yeah. nice talking to you, John. Have a good one. Okay, boss. Thanks.